In this episode, we're going to be going over Yak Tribe and the ways it can enhance your Necromunda experience. Hey there, scabby scummers and gangers, Crimson Oracle here with another episode of Dome Runners TV, and today we're going to be talking about Yak Tribe, the platform that is kind of the go-to slash only game in town for managing your Necromunda gangs. Uh, it is a website that has, uh, it's something called Necromunda Underhive Tools, uh, which allows us to kind of uh, run both campaigns and just uh, keep track of our individual gangs and everything that you might need to do kind of to facilitate that, which includes a lot of customization, which is a really cool feature of this particular uh, part of the Yak Tribe website. Uh, it's also a wonderful forum. So, uh, you know, when you sign up to use the tools, you also get an account to post in the forum. And I know that forums are very old school and uh, web 1.0, uh, but I think that it's uh, nifty uh, platform and I wish that I posted there more often honestly I, I should get back in the habit uh, because uh, social media can just be kind of uh, exhausting uh, whereas I, I find web forums uh, in the old cool old school variety to be uh, kind of refreshing so you know but th that's my opinion obviously uh, your mileage may vary and uh, yeah so of course uh, that is you know, uh, what we're going to be talking about today. And it's a really cool system and I'm looking forward to kind of uh, showing it off. And, and uh, I think this will be helpful for anyone who is looking to uh, kind of get started. So uh, we're, we're going to toss to Wally real quick and then uh, I will go through everything on the Act Tribe uh, Underhive Tools site. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you would like to help support the show, head over to patreon.com slash dome runners. All right, so uh, once you get to the Yak Tribe website, uh, you create an account. On the main page, you've got Necromunda Underhive Tools, which is what we use for our edition of the game. The other one is for the previous editions. Uh, so we've got, uh, you know, any gangs that you've created will be here. These are gangs that other people in the community have created. And then these are your main tools over here. Just to start off with, we're going to talk about the gang manager and we'll create a gang of, uh, let's say, Escher. Now, one thing you'll notice is that when you're pulling up your gangs uh, to select what type of gang to play, that there are, for the house gangs, there's H, O, whatever uh, the book title is, House of Flames, House of uh, Secrets, you know, etc. Or you've got the Gangs of the Underhive, G-O-T-U. So the, this is a previous version of the gang rules. It was a little bit simpler. Uh, those rules are still totally playable. Uh, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with continuing to play with old rules. But uh, if you are using the House of Books, uh, you should definitely select the House of Book uh, from the list here. Okay, so... We'll create an Escher gang called, let's say, the Blades. All right, and so here we are. This is, you know, your main view that is going to be a lot of how you interface with Yak Tribe. Uh, so you've got your gang here. Uh, as you can see, you know, you, you can see what kind of campaign you're playing in. You can just give them a color for when you're in the campaign uh, view. And here's your credits. Uh, you can keep track of me and the gang rating and reputation. Uh, the wealth is the overall value of everything in your gang. Um, and, you know, alignment, uh, any alliances that you have, etc. This is all editable in here. So you can go in here, you can change any of these numbers uh, or, or values. So you could pick, uh, so 
one thing you'll notice is that on Yak Tribe, sometimes things are not fully fleshed out. They will, you know, kind of work on stuff, but it's it's really difficult to keep up with all the changes in the game. So, for example, uh, we don't actually have all of the uh, different noble house alliances here. So, uh, you know, that that's something you might have to deal with. Uh, you, know, you can see allegiance here is for if you are uh, using the corrupted rules, for example, uh, you can control the meat and. Uh, select the, any campaigns that you are going to be a part of, uh, etc. Uh, we also have the territories. So if your campaign is using territories or rackets, they will appear here. Uh, it, this will also have the uh, infrastructure if you're playing in a campaign that uses that. Your stash is right here. That's going to be anything that is not currently assigned to a fighter. Vehicles are here. You will input them here and then you will assign them to a driver. Uh, it's not the most elegant solution, but it is uh, helpful to at least have that managed in Yak Drive now because it wasn't before and it was a, a pain uh, when it wasn't available. And then notes is great because you can include any you know information if, if there's any special rules or anything campaign specific that you want to keep track of, you can put it in the notes section. All right, so let's get down to the nitty gritty, building your gang. So you're going to select a fighter. For example, we need a gang queen, obviously. We'll call her leader, purchase. And as you can see, what it adds is a leader with all of her stats, including a column for XP, uh, her current credit value, and then any starting, any skills that you have, and then any special rules that, that the fighter has so uh, you can go in and when you're in here uh, you can of course give them equipment that's probably the first thing you do so you've got equipment in different categories on here so let's see oh, I hit add I'm gonna hit buy uh, that's funny so yeah one of the things that is interesting here is that uh, you can add or buy items so it's important to make sure that when you're spending a limited amount of credits that you uh, use the buy equipment option uh, that said it's not uh, essential as long as you make sure that your credit value is uh, right at the end you can just go ahead and add everything and then you know once you get to a thousand credits like uh, eliminate what's left in your stash uh, or you could go ahead and buy everything the way that I'm doing right here uh, so when I did uh, when I did buy added the extra one all I do is hit the delete button and that deletes one instance um, so it won't delete all all instances uh, all right so want a stub gun I did it again Let's force a habit. All right, and we'll go with a close combat weapon of a power sword. And we buy that. All right. So you have loadout options here. Um, this is for when you want to create a fighter who has multiple sets of equipment. Um, you know, your leaders and champions can do that and sometimes your prospects. So that's done in there. Skills, uh, you know, obviously spring up is, is a good one for someone with a power sword. Uh, but you can add skills. You see it shows primary and secondary skills and then things that aren't part of your fighter's skills. Uh, you can also, once you have added experience, which you can do right here, uh, you just click that button and it adds an XP. Um, you can then use advancements. So you've got all the different advancements here. If you're, you know, doing if you're doing a random one, you'll have to roll for it yourself, uh, and then you'll have to change whatever the X, the uh, the value of adding that uh, random one is. Uh, to you know that value but so this allows you to control the way that uh the different advancements uh are, are tallied uh which I, I find to be very helpful 
um, because if something costs uh, certain, like if you if you're changing things, I mean, how much uh, the different advances cost. Like if you are an arbitrator and you're tweaking the advancement chart, um, that is something that you can kind of tweak in here. Uh, so it doesn't have to follow the rules exactly. So one of the things I really like about Yak Tribe is that it allows you to customize things to be exactly what you need them to be. Uh, you can also ha add injuries. Uh, so that will then cause whatever the harm that that injury causes uh, to the fighter. Uh, now you can also edit stats directly. Um, this is a really helpful tool for, again, if you are playing with house rules that, for example, give two wounds to Gene Steeler Cult Champions, uh, then you would be able to come in here and you could adjust the number of wounds, etc. cetera. Uh, you can also edit the name and uh, the fighter type you can change the, the XP that the fighter has, the advances, the cost adjustment, and the kills. So you have a lot of flexibility for kind of adjusting your fighters. So now that we have a fighter added, uh, you can add vehicles here. So, you know, if you want to call him wheels, purchase a cargo eight. All right, and that will show up over here, right? And then in order to, oh, right. Uh, it has to be the um, the Guild of Coin. We'll also call him Wheels. And that'll show up there. And then we can go into here, change vehicle, and you can select which vehicle they have. Boom. You can see your upgrade slots. Uh, and then you can actually purchase upgrades from the different categories in here. Very useful. Now you can also add pets. So for example, if you were going to add a carry added that you had received, uh, you can add one here, but you have to actually add it to the fighters uh, menu as well. So. Once, uh, see that that costs zero credits because uh, when you add status item, it gets added to the fighter's equipment, and then even even so, it gets its own stat line where you can keep track of stuff like injuries and things like that. All right, you can also add hired guns here, so and that that includes. Your hangers on like ammo jack. You know, you want an ammo jack. Boom. Ammo jack added. If you want to add any brutes, they're also available in here. Now you can go down here. You can access your brutes. Eruption breath and get rid of the chemical cloud breath, for example. Uh, you can add flak armor. Uh, and then there are some things that come up because I have custom items in that, but so you can add the razor sharp talents, etc. Uh, another thing that you can do is upload an image of your gang from your gallery. You can clone a gang. Uh, now, during play, if you want to go to the trading post, you can uh, set what rarity of stuff you want to see. So if you're, say, you know, you had an eight roll, you can go in, you can see all the stuff that's available, which is pretty nifty. I mean, it's, it's useful. Uh, it actually can be faster than kind of searching through like a PDF that has uh, the trading post on it. So I like it a lot for that. And so that's that's pretty much everything you can do with a with a gang in here. Uh, you know, once you've added a campaign, the territories or rackets or uh, you know the buildings uh, that you build as part of an outcast uh, <coughs> outcast campaign, 
all get collected here. Um, now uh, you can pull up easily and quickly a gang sheet that has everything that your gang has uh, on it, which is really useful. Uh, it's like a single sheet. It's great for keeping track of uh, kills, injuries, uh, anything like that uh, during the course of the game. And then you've also got your gang cards. So this will generate cards for each and every one of your uh, fighters and vehicles. Uh, again, this is really, really helpful. Uh, we pretty much exclusively use these cards rather than having to handwrite everything out because you know fighters are constantly shifting and changing. They're constantly adding stuff. And so this is just easier. And then there's a larger version of the gang cards. <laughs> So that covers everything with uh, actually kind of messing with a gang. Part two, managing campaigns. Next up, if you are the arbitrator of a campaign, uh, then you could come in here. For example, and you can view a campaign. Mm -hmm. So you get the different territories that were generated, who currently possesses them. So if you're the arbitrator, uh, you, you can view this edit page, uh, which allows you to set who has administrative, administrative privileges uh, between the different accounts. Uh, and then you've also got your territories that you set up uh, when you first roll up your campaign. Uh, and then if you're using rackets, they're down here. You can, you know, to put battles in to input them, and you can then take notes of uh, the what happened in the battle. And uh, for campaign events, you can kind of keep a log of them here so that people can see where the campaign is uh, as things advance. Uh, it allows you to kind of have a, a system for kind of communicating between everyone in you know one kind of setting, which is really cool. Now, if you are creating a campaign, you get to choose between Dominion Law or Law and Misrule or Outlander, uh, which is a little bit misleading, I guess. Uh, campaign name, uh, Brawl Fest. And so you can search for gangs to add you can add your own gangs you can choose territories and you can also add rackets and this is uh you can, can you can have both so that allows you to oh cool so you can generate a random one or you can select there's not a randomizer for the territories because the territories are usually generated from uh, like a specific list or format that is a little bit more complicated than just drawing a random one, I guess. Um, anyway, so the different rackets uh, and, and territories can be available and players can fight over both, uh, which is a really nifty thing to include uh, as an option here. And then, of course, as I was saying, you could add individual battles in as well. Uh, and then if you want to add, or if you want to look at a Dominion campaign, I mean, um, a Outlands campaign, you got this one. You see down here, uh, there's no section for territories. Uh, that is because the, uh, exactly here, uh, the material and structures are the goal. Right. Admittedly, this is not quite as, uh, you know, uh, it's not a map. Uh, it's more just like a list. But that's so that's the nature of the uh, Outlands campaign. So, you know, kind of is what it is. So that is how you uh, deal with campaigns in the system. Uh, that really, you know, then we, we have settings. So uh, you can choose between the original version of the gang, uh, 2017. Uh, or the current edition of the rules, more or less, uh, by checking on this box. So you pretty much always want to keep that checked unless you're playing straight out of the uh, underhive box from six years ago. Um, 
You can restrict what equipment you see on the adding equipment screen. Uh, this is useful for kind of giving you the option to kind of purchase everything uh, just by what's in your house list. Uh, restrict skills. Uh, do you want to include a post battle sequence and do you want to show retired fighters? So that, that's basically the, uh, the settings that are available. Part three, customization. Now where this system gets really interesting and where I think that it is, you know, really superlative is the customization menu. So you can come in here, you can add vehicles that meet whatever you know whatever your homebrew or whatever custom vehicles are uh you can add them to here and they can be purchased by people and you can even share them across a the campaign so for example uh shared campaign and then you can pick which campaign the vehicle is shared with and then you can, you can kind of set the movement is armor values Uh, handling, save, how many upgrade slots it has, and how much it costs. I just made something up. But as you can see, this is now a truck that is available for people to buy in your campaign. Uh, you can add custom injuries and change what stat they affect, which is kind of cool if you want to come up with your own injuries and your own injuries table. You can come up with custom structures for the Outlands campaign, uh, which is, uh, you know, I, I think a really cool thing because uh, the Outlands campaign is interesting, but I think that it's one flaw is that the uh, structures that they had were not all kind of useful and not everything kind of gelled perfectly, um, which is why when I did my version of an Outlands campaign, I kind of uh, mixed it up a little bit and changed the rules around. Uh, but being able to customize the campaign like that is really cool and you can see you can add custom settlements as well uh, which allows you to set different amounts of defense resources and toxicity uh, so i did that for my campaign uh, and then you can also make custom territories and rackets custom gangers now this is one that i have had to use extensively for inquisitor and for uh starting a campaign before the uh, Ashway Snowmads and Squats got added. Uh, so as you can see here, for example, uh, we've got the, the Dust Rider and you can see all of their stats in here. And if you want to make them a crew, you can select that, which will give that them the function of being able to take vehicles, which is useful because sometimes Warhammer community will drop a new uh, type of driver on us and uh, you know, you have to kind of get it inputted quickly uh, in order to use it. So being able to add stuff that's not already set up in the system is also kind of future proofing. Uh, you can come up with custom skills, which I did here for the new skills that came with the nomads and the, uh, the squats. And then this is one of the most important ones. So you can create custom weapon stats, which I had to do again to import the various custom weapons. Uh, now, when you add all this, now you are limited to four special rules, which some weapons have more than four special rules, so that's annoying when you run into that, uh, but it is what it is. Um, this allows you to create a weapon profile. The only thing is that you then have to go into uh, the custom equipment menu, and you have to add that weapon so if you add custom equipment you know you type the name the cost what section of the equipment it goes into how rare it is this and then this here you're going to select the stat line for that weapon 
So if I go to basic weapons, all of the stat lines that I've created are available for that basic weapon that I'm adding. And so that really is, you know, the, the thing about Yak Tribe, I think that, that is the most rewarding uh, is that it is a completely uh, open-ended editable system that really offers you a ton of options. And that's awesome. Uh, I would still love to see an app from GW that has like the rules in it um, because it would really be helpful to kind of have everything accessible in like a hot links kind of way, which they can't do for Yak Tribe, you know, because they are trying to obey copyright law uh, to the extent possible and not kind of uh, make it so you can't purchase, you don't need to purchase the, the rules. So uh, yeah, this is a, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a step. Um, uh, it's not perfect. Uh, like I said, having rules references uh, like you would in a GW run app is really nice. But on the other hand, I doubt a GW app would allow you to make such heavy adjustments, uh, you know, to all of your stuff like your stats and, and all of that. Um, whereas this really allows you to customize just about anything. You can use the Yak Tribe system to play all kinds of different, uh, you know, sort of games based off the of Necromunda rules. You know, if you want to kind of use that core rule set for stuff. So it is a really great tool and it's not actually that hard to use. Um, it just takes a little bit of kind of getting used to the quirks. Uh, and once you've got it down, then you are going to have a much easier time arbitrating and even just playing game gangs in this, uh, this complicated game. So I hope that that was helpful for everyone. And uh, yeah. Thanks as always to Carl Casey at White Bat Audio for the show's music. And of course, thank you to my wonderful patrons who make everything that we do here possible. And if you'd like to help support the show for as little as $2 a month, you can hop on over to patreon.com slash dome runners. And of course, if you would like to check out the podcast that is over at Buzzsprout or your preferred podcasting network of choice. And of course, everybody out there, please stay safe and don't forget to change your paint water.